All right, welcome to another episode of God, Yay or Nay. I'm here with Thomas Champa. Thomas, thanks for joining me, man. Yeah, no problem, man. Thanks for reaching out, and, and I'm pumped to be on. I, I dug into some of your stuff, so I'm, I'm pumped for a little conversation back and forth with it all. Nice, man. Uh, yeah, no, I'm actually pumped, too. I, I love your story. Um, actually, it's like it goes with my themes of my podcast so well, like a story of self-transformation and uh, personal development and, like, both of those things I'm just so interested in. And uh, I don't know, why don't you kind of give, uh, introduce yourself a little bit to my audience and uh, we can kind of jump in that way. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm uh, Tommy Champa. I'm only 24 years old, so still got a lot of years ahead of me, God willing. And um, yeah, I'm based out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, I work, well, I'm currently in the transition to start in a, a marketing role here in the next week or so. Um, and then do some stuff on the side, just kind of building my own brand and, and having fun that way. I'm a big sports fan. Um, being out of Milwaukee, you would think I'm a Brewers fan, but I'm actually a Colorado Rockies fan. Um, and then we got the Bucks in the finals right now. We got one more game to go. Nice. Um, so I'm pretty pumped about that. But yeah, I grew up in a small town, moved to Milwaukee for, for college and just haven't left yet and, and love it. So it's kind of a short background, but um, a lot of years ahead of me. Um, I wouldn't say I have everything figured out, but have definitely gone through a lot and uh, learned a, a few lessons along the way. So, yeah. And like, uh, so when we do talk about like your self-transformation, like um, where does it kind of start? Cause I think with you, you were kind of talking a lot more about getting like caught up in like a party lifestyle and stuff like that a little bit. And um, well, why don't you kind of give us a little background into that? Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely got caught up in the party lifestyle. And I think, I mean, it's pretty normal, right? A lot of people have that kind of stage in life. Uh, mm -hmm. I would just say that I had it a lot earlier. Um, so growing up in a small town in Wisconsin, there's a couple of things that you do. You either are kind of like the, the choir, um, maybe quote unquote, a little bit geeky, uh, which I think is super cool now. Um, back <laughs> then, I, I thought it was kind of, kind of lame, I guess, but um, or you play sports and you party. Um, and I fell into that group. I, I did well my freshman year in high school. Um, so got good grades, did well in sports, and then kind of went down a, a different path of just playing sports and partying. And um, yeah, I mean, there, when you think of a small town, there really isn't a ton that you can do. I mean, we were pretty much your in cornfields and you work out and you play sports and then on the weekends or weekdays you have a couple of beers with your buddies and and people around you so we got caught up with it pretty quickly I would say uh, which led to the, some downfalls um, probably started around 14 15 and just kind of went at it a lot harder it was like we played hard but we partied harder is kind of the the saying that we had um, and we stuck to it pretty well. So it was a it was an interesting kind of um, journey in high school where I just didn't really focus on anything other than those two things, um, which, again, caught up with me probably a couple of years down the road. Yeah, no kidding. And honestly, I, I, I'm from a small town as well. So like I really understand that whole one. Like, yeah. There's just nothing to do. So it just kind of comes into that. And you're yeah. right. It's like athletics or like uh going in like or just being really good at academics kind of stuff yeah, yeah. And, and that's, like, a, that's a better way to put it than I did yeah yeah and uh no it's a, it is really interesting um and like so when when you were like playing basketball and stuff like you were actually like really good like didn't you could like get to actually like travel around and stuff and like you kind of like saw yourself as like an athlete yeah I mean I it's funny when I think back to my identity, I lost a lot of it after I graduated because I didn't play sports, but I identified as an athlete. So I played basketball. I played travel basketball and baseball. Um, I was definitely better at baseball, but I played pretty well at basketball as well. Um, when I was younger, I played on a travel baseball team that went to multiple different states. We went out to New York for a big tournament. Um, we'd play all around like the Midwest kind of area. Um, and so honestly, like my, my goals growing up were to be a college athlete and, and kind of go that route. Um, I think as I got older and, and started to party a little bit more, that kind of fell off the, the wayside just because I didn't, um, I probably didn't put in the work that was needed. And I also didn't really care to anymore. Mm. Uh, but I remember even like graduating high school, it was like after like the first basketball season that I missed, because I was the first sports season I would have missed um, or like didn't play. 
I, I didn't know how to think or feel or whatever, because I identified so much as an athlete that I was just kind of in shock that I didn't have that part of my life anymore. Mm -hmm. It was like half my life was kind of taken away because it was either play sports or, or kind of party. And now I'm just stuck in this one area. Um, so it was an interesting transition to kind of go through. No, I think that's a really interesting one, especially like when your identity is like so wrapped up into something like, uh, I think like people, if they haven't gone through that, like just having to go through that and see what happens when your identity just completely gets slipped under your feet and all of a sudden you have nothing like that's yeah. tough. And like, um, that's like, especially if you are battling with like partying too much or like any kind of addiction or something, a lot of times when that happens, you might just slip even totally. further into that because, you know, it's just a way to mask that or just like put it off to the side kind of thing. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And I know like, we'll probably get into a little bit, but I saw, I had a lot of family kind of go down the wrong path with mostly alcohol. Uh, my mom battled addiction for years and years. And um, for me, that was one kind of, um, I don't know, it was just the norm, right? I mean, I, I grew up with her um, in the household, mostly my dad and her got a divorce and uh, they still lived together, but he worked in different states and stuff like that. So for many years, it was just pretty, pretty much my mom and I, and then my sister would always hang out with her friends because she was a little bit older. So she'd get out of the house. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just kind of grew up around that. And, and that's kind of all I really knew. And like you said, when I lost sports, it was like, well, what the heck do I do with my life? I'm not quote unquote good at school. Um, I might be smart, but I'm not academically focused, I think is a good way to put it. So um, it was definitely, and I think like you said, a lot of people go through a transition where they lose a part of their identity. And it's like, what the heck do I do now? Like, mm -hmm. How do I, how do I cope with it? And, and how do I move forward? Yeah. And you know, what's interesting, especially uh, in the Midwest, um, cause I, I think we all kind of like hear about the Midwest, even up here in Canada, like uh, it's like a place that's kind of like losing a lot of its like jobs when it comes to like high paying trade jobs and stuff like that, which you, and like just uh, manufacturing and stuff like that. So it, I can actually kind of see like a lot of kids coming up who might lose their identity of, as just a student because even just being a student is a fun identity right like you know it's like there's not a lot of pressure in it but then yeah. all of a sudden you turn 18 and like you know people start leaving and then like you might be sitting yeah. there like what the hell am I doing here <laughs> like um I, I I know that can be a tough thing for a lot of people like do you see that a lot in the midwest where it's just kind of like uh when like kids get out of high school all of a sudden they're just kind of frozen and not really knowing what to do totally I think I mean I think you hit the nail on the head there um it's funny coming from a small town and I don't know if you can relate a little bit but it's like you either leave that place after high school and you never come back or you stay there pretty much for the rest of your life I mean there's some oddballs in there but a lot of the families that live in that small town and, and I love everybody from that town I just got out of it um but a lot of the families are families that have been there for generations. Uh, and I think a lot of it's tied to that point of people just struggle with what they want to do. And, and uh, there's a lot of comfort with staying in the same place. Um, it's so, so hard yeah, to like move like uh, when you don't know anything, especially when it's like uh, you're used to small, like totally you, yeah because like even when you go to milwaukee it's probably like holy shit and <laughs> yeah. like and like I, I don't even i haven't been to milwaukee but like when you go to like a city like new york after that then you're just like well what the fuck these people are crazy totally yeah i mean it's nuts because you think i mean milwaukee's not technically a big city i mean we're big but we're not massive right um and i just remember going from a town of like maybe 1500 people to a city of God, I don't know what we are now. Greater Milwaukee, I think it's a couple million or a, a million five. Mm. Um, and I was like, I don't even know what to do. Like I could grocery shop and it's only like two minutes away or I could go to a mall and it's only like five minutes away before it's like a, a whole day trip almost. Um, but yeah, I just think a lot of people like struggle with kind of breaking out of that. And there's a lot, I mean, I had a lot of fear going into college of just like losing friends from back home or or not being there for the cool party or the sporting event, you know? Um, and it's definitely, that's almost another part of your identity that you have to either give up a little bit or, or stick with and, and kind of live there for a while. Um, so it's an interesting transition. Definitely, definitely one I struggled with going into college, but. Yeah, no kidding. Um, so like, let's kind of talk about this because I like this wavelength of like, 
now you're younger, you're kind of old, you lost your identity as an athlete. So like, where did you start to like search to recover your own kind of identity or maybe your own just, you know, searching for something that now like this can be something I can pursue almost, right? Totally. Um, yeah, so I struggled my first year of college. I'll be straight up. I, uh, so I went to a private engineering school, um, thought electrical engineering was just putting stuff back together. So when I was a kid, I used to just break TV remotes and then mm. put them back together. Um, okay. And sometimes they work, sometimes they didn't. So my dad would either be mad or not. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I struggled a lot and then uh, got into some major trouble during the summer. Um, got, yeah, just some, some really bad trouble. Got a, a little bit of technically arrested, but not really. I wasn't like put in anywhere. I was just uh, held for a little bit. And um, yeah, again, just lost like I was like, what the heck am I doing with my life? Like, I'm completely down the wrong path. I don't have anything to go after. And you think that was from drinking that kind of set you up to that or? Totally. Yeah, yeah. I think I think okay. that was the big thing. And and like you said, I kind of coped with losing my identity for a little bit of, of an athlete with just being more of a partier and, um, and then not doing well in school. It was like, well, I'll just tie myself to this image of, you know, I'm not a great student. I'm a guy that likes to have fun kind of whatever, yeah, whatever comes my way. Um, but after going through something like that, it was like, I need to, you know, change something up. I need to make something up, get away from people maybe. Um, and over probably the next year, it was nothing that was like a quick fix. But the big thing that always interests me was just business in general, um, whether that's my own thing or just studying it in, in, um, in general or what other people are doing. Uh, kind of like the creator economy now is something that's fun to, to dig into. And um, so that's what I really started to push for, but also like you talked about, it was just self-development. It's like, how can I be the best Tommy there is? Uh, because I'm literally starting at ground zero right now. Like this mm -hmm. is the lowest point of my life. And how can I build up to like the highest point of my life? So, um, that's really what I dug into. And again, it wasn't like a quick fix. It wasn't like, like next month I was the best. I dropped everything, but, um, it's kind of a journey from there. Yeah. And, uh, no, and. I think uh, that's an important thing for everybody to know. It's never going to be a quick fix. fix. Yeah, it's, as much as we might want it, right? Yeah, and like uh, the thing is when you're sometimes in those like really low moments, like you want those quick fixes. Be, and like, it's funny about that because like if it's not a quick fix, you're almost like it's not even worth like pursuing. <laughs> yeah. Like, and then it keeps you back into that shitty uh, kind of mindset. But the thing is like, there has to be some sort of like uh, thing where you, start looking at it like okay this is a slow process but it's like you constantly get these small little wins that like build momentum on each other and you just have to learn to like love those small little wins and be like kind of like just grateful for them and that's how you cultivate like a whole new kind of personality and um yeah like you said maybe even identity on top of it right yeah and i think like i mean i still still struggle with like celebrating small wins. Like I'm not good at that. Mm. Um, but I think like, even just like for, if somebody's in a similar spot or, or struggling, it's like, I remember being, especially if you're younger, even if you're older, but I remember being at that bottom point of my life and I looked at it and it's like, I'm only 18 years old. I could either look at this, like I'm at 18 and I'm at the bottom of my life. Like, wow, that happened early. Or I could be like, wow, it happened early. I have so many years to just turn this. It takes me 20 years to fix this thing. I'm only 38. I got plenty of life left. Ha, you know? ha, 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 ha. Honestly, yeah. And I could see a lot of people chose it. I could do this for five years. That's nothing. I could turn <laughs> Yeah. So it's like, I mean, it was just like a perspective thing of just like, man, I'm 18. Yeah, I screwed up a ton and I'm really low right now. But God, if I worked my butt off for the next 10 years, I'd be 28 and still young and, and, you know, and in a different position in life. Um, so I was lucky that somehow I thought of it that way. Uh, I don't know how I did. Normally I probably would have thought the other way of like, Oh, I hit it early and now I'll just keep rolling at the low point. But, um, mm -hmm. it's just something to kind of think about. Like when you hit a low point, it's like, you have time to, to fix it. Right. Like, again, it's not going to be overnight. It's going to be probably years, but, um, we all, we, again, God willing, we have time to, to do stuff and to fix it and to take action and um, learn from our mistakes. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and, and put in that thought, like if you just sit back and actually think about it and like where you want to go and where you want your life to go. And like, if you start thinking in chunks, like a year, three years, five years, like 
a lot of change can happen on, in those times. So like you really should uh, like put in that thought because yeah, once you do it, like you'll start to be surprised like what ideas start coming to you and like where your life can kind of start changing course. Um, totally. So I, I do want to like uh, um, kind of like, so when you started this personal development uh, journey, was there like things that came into your life? I don't know if it would be books or speakers or uh, mentors or like um, things that kind of like, maybe pushed you in the proper direction a little bit yeah totally I, I don't think i'd be pushed in the right direction if some if i pushed myself i probably would have went a different mm -hmm. path um no right out of the gate i just dug into like it was funny i got really into gary v um, oh yeah i love like, gary v <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like everyone says that like oh when i started off i listened to gary v you know um and like tom bill you people like that i just looked up stuff on youtube was the big thing um, and then I started to dive into books and actually realized that I like to read, uh, before I never read a full book in my life. And now I read every single day. And, um, so that was kind of like the early part of it. And I think a great starting spot for anybody that kind of wants to either learn a new skill or go into personal development. Um, but then a, a big thing was I, I did find some mentors out here in Milwaukee. My sister actually connected me with, um, a guy out here in Milwaukee who, um, isn't like super, super successful on paper, but just very, the, the lifestyle he has is just something I really am attracted to, um, in terms of, yeah, good financials, but also like a good living life, like a, a good, uh, marriage, a good family life, just good morals, values. Um, and so that was something I, I worked pretty hard just to have a relationship with him. And, um, honestly, without that relationship, I, I don't know where I'd be today. I think I credit a lot to him and, um, also myself of just putting his advice and guidance into action. Um, but that- you, uh, Yeah, can you tell us a little bit about uh, some of his like advice and guidance? Yeah, well, I, I mean, I think honestly, it's a it's a lot personal based. It's- oh, Okay, okay. And, and I think a lot of it, like a lot of people are like, go find a mentor. And it's like, it's great if you go find one, but don't find one just based off of one quality, I don't think. Hmm. That's my perspective of- I can go find somebody who's super rich or whatever, has a great business, but like if their marriage is crappy, that's not a life that I want. Mm. Um, and so for me, it was like, how can I find somebody that has a good overall kind of life that I'm looking to have? And maybe that's not the same for everybody. Maybe other people don't care to get married, so they don't have to put that one into effect. Or um, maybe their family situation is different where they aren't, you know, talking with their family, like maybe they don't have to think about that. Um, but for me, it was like, how can I find somebody who has all of this kind of experience and, and a good kind of foundation of life that, that I can kind of follow suit. So um, I would say like for guidance and the big thing is just to, just to kind of do stuff. It's super simple. But I remember when I first talked to him, one of the big things, he's like, you just got to start like doing stuff. And I was like, well, <laughs> what the heck does that mean? <laughs> Um, and he's like, figure out like what you need to fix is the big first thing. Like for me, it was like, okay, I need to fix a lot of things. It was like, I need to maybe take people out of my life. So it's like, I started to actually do that. I didn't sit there and contemplate like, oh, if I did that, or if I didn't do that, it's like, no, I just did it because I knew that would get to start to get me to where I wanted to be. Mm. Um, and that can be applied to anything. Like if you're struggling with, um, your finances. It's like, don't sit there and think about how crappy your finances might be. It's like, start doing something. Um, and again, like we talked about, it could be three, four, five years down the road and saving that $20 or reading that one financial book a month could make a massive difference. Mm -hmm. um, so that's honestly like one of the biggest things I've ever taken away from him of just like doing more and then reflecting and then doing more after that is better than just sitting there doing nothing action is uh yeah it, it honestly it is like uh something that like a lot of people need to learn and I, I think uh for young people especially like I know what you're saying like when I got into like some funks as well you become paralyzed like you just don't uh you know you don't want to like move and take action on stuff and every time you take act or every time you think of taking action you pretty much like start overthinking it. Like you just yeah. like, hey, it's always just like, well, I could, but this could happen, blah, blah, blah. But what happens if this isn't the right direction? 
And it's yeah. kind of funny. You could sometimes take action in the wrong direction, but that action's still better just because like that action will tell you to take uh, change directions eventually, you know? So like, totally. I love that. And I, I couldn't tell you how many pros and cons lists I've written in my life. And at one point I was just told, just scrap that, like, stop, stop writing pros and cons lists, just do it and figure it out if it's a pro or a con. It's, it's huge. And like, uh, cause I, I remember hearing something that might've been even Gary V saying this, but like, <laughs> I remember hearing like, uh, somebody like that saying, um, like people who are in like, uh, better positions like for success and stuff usually are making quick decisions okay. and it, like I, I think that's a big thing because uh it's not about making right decisions sometimes because yeah. like you know we all make mistakes and it's just that's natural but it's also like make a decision and stick with it kind of thing and okay. then like once you make that decision and action starts happening that's where you start like like you said reflect that's where you can reflect and be like okay I can actually change this decision now a little bit now that but you're always in that action orientated like uh, focus which is good totally and I think like one thing that I always think about or, or challenge myself is like life is about experiences it's not about thinking like thinking plays a huge part in it but if I want to in my opinion or what I want to do is like I want to have a life full of experiences so if I sit there and waste how much time just thinking about maybe I do that experience maybe I don't I'm losing out on multiple experiences that I could have. And, and they're not all going to be good. They're not all going to be bad, but I'd rather experience a bunch of stuff in my life than to sit there and think about all the experiences I could have had. Um, which is like that classic saying of people on their deathbed, wish they would have done more or whatever the case is, um, or followed their dreams or whatever there's, I forgot what like the true saying is, but, um, that's just how I think of it is like, if I see an experience or if I see something that I could take action on, it's like, I'm going to do that. And then if it's good or bad, at least I have a story to tell. Yeah. Like at the end of it, it could be a terrible story. It could be like, yeah, I, again, I got into massive trouble. And going back in my life, would I take away all the stuff that I did in high school, all the stuff I did out of high school to, to not have a great life or to be at that low point? Probably not because um, it was experiences and now I can speak to it, um, which is like a, a big thing that I think. I value is just being able to speak from experience, not just from thinking or studying. Mm -hmm. And like, uh, yeah. And like how you say, like, try to like look at going after an experience and being like, is this going to be good or bad? If you constantly think like that, like the one thing I remember telling myself like years ago was just like, you know, a lot of times I don't take action and I just sit back but I've now realized that's always bad. So it's just like, just take the <laughs> yeah. action. I still might get bad, but at least uh, I got a larger like chance of getting good. You know what I'm saying? Totally. Yeah. Your percentage goes up. That's for sure. Ha, 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 ha. Um, so yeah, I don't know you, you, when you talk about like uh, kind of changing your life and stuff, and I remember you were kind of looking at like now becoming more goal oriented and like value oriented. Like, can you kind of explain that a little bit to uh, my audience? Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's funny. It's in my LinkedIn bio, but I, I say, I, I live a life based on values, not one based off popularity. Um, and it's something that I, I mean, I still have to push myself to do because it's easy to fall into the popularity trap, do what people want you to do, um, do what family members recommend, even if it's not best for you. Um, the big thing for me is just like, I, I have certain values in my life and I want to live them out. And like a value to me is something that's kind of true to myself. Uh, they could change over time. Maybe I, maybe I value eating good right now, but later, you know, and I don't value it as much, which I'm sure I will. Um, but for me, it's like a lot of people, I don't know, growing up in a small town, I'm sure you saw it a little bit is a lot of my actions were based off of trying to be popular or trying to be known as this guy. Mm -hmm. Um, and for me now it's like, I don't want to be known as a certain guy. I don't want to be known as the, obviously like the partier or the, even like the, the personal development guy. It's like, no, I want to be known for the values I have. And, and that's over multiple different categories. It's like, like I value my relationship with my sister a ton. Um, she's helped me out. She helped raise me and stuff like that. And it's like, okay, how can I portray that and, and live a life based on that? Um, so that comes with being nice to her, obviously. 
Um, but just like showing her that I appreciate her and showing her like, Hey, you helped me out through some of the toughest times that I've had. It's like, how can I live that value out? Um, and I don't think, again, I don't think there's anything wrong with maybe going towards popularity a little bit. Um, obviously it can benefit you in some States and, um, some circumstances, but for like, for me, it's just like, I don't care to be popular. I care to, to live a life that I like, um, with the values that I value. And, um, if you don't like it, it's like, you, you don't have to talk to me to be completely honest. Like, I don't, I don't mind it. Um, and so that's kind of like what I mean behind it. But again, it, it, it's a lot different for different people and people have different values. So. Mm -hmm. And like, honestly, I don't like, even how you were saying like values uh, can sometimes be antithetical to like uh, to freaking popularity. I don't really, uh, sometimes it could be the exact opposite. I think Gary V is like a perfect example. Like, you kind of know his like how his business values are and he's a guy who always sticks yeah. with it even if like people call him a complete asshole or something but because of that his he's like one of the most popular guys uh like for business related stuff like in the world then like i think that is because like when you do have like actual values that you like that you actually like think about like on a daily basis or like have that you are really important to you like, like, you know, like people will like see that over time because over time when that shit develops, like it changes the person you are. And like, at the end of the day, you're going to get noticed for uh, those values. Totally. And I think, I think you nailed it. I think the, the thing about living a life based on values versus popularity is with values, you're consistent. People know what they're going to get. Again, like you said, Gary Vee, people know they might get an asshole they, <laughs> or they, they know they're going to get this high intensity guy, um, but it is super consistent. And for me, like living one, a life based off popularity is it's flaky. You don't know if this person's going to do this thing or that thing. Um, you don't know if they're going to be your friend or not be your friend based on maybe it doesn't help the popularity point of it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so like for me, it's like living my life based on values. I want it's like I want to be consistent. Like I want somebody to come up to Tommy and if this situation occurs, they know I'm going to go one direction with it because it's my values. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's a, that's a big point of it is like, again, values is consistency. It's, it's being known for something. Popularity is being known for nothing, but just being known for the, the cool thing at the moment, maybe. It's uh yeah, uh, man, you said that perfectly. Um, actually, the when you just said that though, it uh, made me think of a lot of like YouTube per personalities, like, over, <laughs> yeah. like especially over the last four years with like politics and shit. Like you could tell the ones who actually have like real like political values, yeah. um, like because they would switch ideas when the people they support do something they don't agree with they'll you know but then there's also those guys who just support these people because it's great for you know and it doesn't matter I'm not I'm not even saying like if it's left or right I'm just saying like you know you'll see the people who only support and they don't even like uh waver they don't have their own values they just have the value or they just like support whoever they do because it gets more YouTube clicks and like in the short term that popularity kills but it's kind of funny when Trump lost and the whole landscape just completely <laughs> changed like then all of a sudden you saw a lot of these guys try, uh, try to like completely switch. And then yeah. they lost a ton of popularity just because it's just like, Oh, what the fuck? Like, what do you even believe in? You're just kind of like, you can tell now they're just chasing clicks and like, but yeah. the people who are always like based on those values, they're still popular and they're still going like strong. Totally. Yeah. It's funny. You talk about like YouTube and, and I want to say this too, is like, I don't, if somebody lives a life more on popularity than values, like I, I don't judge. It's like, do it. I'm, I'm big for just living the life that you want to live. And if that's it, then go for it. I'm cool with it. Um, but it's funny with the YouTube thing is uh, for some reason, this like Logan Paul, you know, like obviously that's a big name in YouTube and obviously a lot of people don't like him. A lot of people do like him. I don't know where I fit in that category. I'm just extremely interested in like his growth and how he's changed over time. So I, I kind of dig into it a little bit mm -hmm. and it, it's cool to see like the, the transformation that he had from obviously his troubles back in however many years ago till now where he's just like, you know what you're going to get from the guy. Mm. It's not somebody who's all over the place like he used to be, or again, like you said, chasing clicks or cloud. It's like, no, this guy kind of knows who he is now. And, and obviously probably has years to go, but I just find that super interesting that again, maybe 
like for myself, I started off in a life that I was living based on popularity, kind of the same trajectory, like in terms of like how his was. And then I started to figure out who I am. And now I'm super consistent with who I am. Mm -hmm. um, so it was just something that I thought about when he brought up YouTube, but I think it's a cool a case study of, of somebody who just went through some crap and, and started to figure out who they really were. Mm -hmm. And uh, hey, like, like you said, you got to take that action too. And like action always like gives you some sort of result at least. And that's where you can okay. do that work of figuring out who you are, which like, yeah, the more you come to that, the more you understand what your values are as well. Like it, yeah. it does make for a, like a healthier, I think life at least. Totally. Mm -hmm. Um, so like, I don't know, we were talking like at the beginning a little bit about addiction and like you said, like you have like a kind of like addiction that was running through the family a little bit. Like how, how do, how do you like break that cycle? And like, I don't know, well, just interested in that. Yeah. Um, it's interesting that I broke the cycle. I thought I would be a part of the cycle. So I'm, I'm pretty pumped about that. And I'm sure my family is as well. <laughs> um, saves you some money too. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I, as far as back as I can think, I know my, my, it's a lot on my mom's side. Um, so my mom was addicted to alcohol, uh, went to rehab a couple of times, um, did AA, just never really like stuck with it. Um, and I think even her, her mother ended up in a mental kind of like house, um, just not very stable mentally, partly due to, to drugs and alcohol. Her dad was a little bit on that end as well. Great guy, but just had a little bit of a drinking problem. Um, and so it was just kind of like going down the family. It's like, well, who's next? You know, like we always, as bad as this sounds, we used to always tease like, well, I'll just take that one for the team. You know, like I'll take that one under my wing. Um, so yeah, I grew up with just a, a household and, and I'm actually thankful for it. Cause I think it helped me grow up pretty, pretty quickly. Um, but I grew up in a household with my mom where like, I was the guy that had to go through her cupboards to dump out her alcohol. Like, I was the guy searching under the bed to dump out the bag of wine. Um, and at, and I was probably nine years old, 10 years old at the time. And, and I made a game out of it. Like I, I had fun. I'm sure she didn't, <laughs> uh, like for me, it was like the weekly date of, of Tuesday or Wednesday. I always switch it up. It's like, all right, let's, let's, uh, let's go around the house, mom and, and figure out what we got. And we always used to get into big arguments about it and stuff. Oh, wow. Um, but it was just like, a, I mean, for me again, it was like super normal. Like I, mm -hmm. I think everyone, like the living situation you grow up in or, or are in now, it's like, it seems normal to you. Cause that's what you're used to. Mm -hmm. So like for me, like my mom, forgetting to pick me up because she was drunk probably um, from a sporting practice was like another day thing. Like I didn't think too much about it. It's like, Hey man, can I just get a ride home? Or I would walk home or ride a bike home or whatever. Um, so honestly, like looking back, I really don't see anything like everything just felt normal. Um, knowing now what I know, it was far from like the normal family that quote unquote is in America. But, um, yeah, I think I'm just super grateful for it. Cause I, I grew up quickly. I had to deal with fights. I had to deal with going to rehab centers to visit my mom and seeing that whole situation, um, going through really tough family meetings of divorce and, uh, rehab centers where they'd sit you down and say like, Hey, you're not going to see your mom for the next couple months. It's like, oh at 10 years old, I, I, I didn't think anything of it. Now that I look back, it's like, wow, that's pretty insane. Mm -hmm. um, and so again, like anyone going through that, I'm sure it feels somewhat normal to you. It might, it probably sucks, but um, when you get older, you just have a different perspective in life and appreciation for people around you. Um, like my grandma now is my favorite person because she, she raised me from 11 to pretty much 17. And, and I just love her to death because like she's been one solid rock in my life. Um, and I think if I didn't go through this stuff with my mom, I probably wouldn't have the same appreciation. No, I, I agree with that completely. Yeah, man. I, I could see that being like kind of tough. Uh, and like, I can see jumping into that, like, uh, like just into like drinking a lot of alcohol as well. Like it just probably was just normal for you. Right. Yeah. Well, it's funny. I always, I always think back to a conversation I had. So I got in trouble in school drinking, like the first week of my sophomore year. Um, so I got suspended from sports and stuff. And I sat down with the, uh, the superintendent and the principal at the time. And they sat me in and they're like, 
um, they're like, this must be because of your mom. Like, because my mom passed away when I was 14. So I was going oh, through shit. that. Sorry, stuff well, no, it's okay. It's been 10 years, I think is, is yeah, this. Yeah. Um, but, uh, so they sat me down and they're like, Hey, like, we'll open the gym up for you early. Like we feel really bad. And they're like, it must be just because of your mom. And I remember standing up and being like, don't, don't ever say that. Like the, this is, I take full responsibility. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's just stuff like that, that you go through. That's, that's insane. And again, I'm sure that's what looking back, I'm sure going through that stuff with my mom probably led me down that path, but I also chose it. Like I'll, I'll take that, that bullet because, um, I don't want to give up ownership of my life because then it gives me, it doesn't give me the chance to change it. Like if I blame that on my mom, it's like, well, then I don't have the chance to change my decisions. Then I just, I'm kind of a, a victim at that point. Um, so I take full responsibility in all those decisions and, and the path I went down. And again, I wouldn't change any of it. Um, great experiences, great fun. Um, and it, it helped me become who I am today. So um, yeah, it was an interesting journey though. Mm -hmm. Hey man. And I love how you said like about taking ownership, like that's yeah, man, how, how important is taking ownership? Like, I think anytime, like we talk about self-transformation, like changing yourself, to be something that you want to be, it starts with ownership. If you don't, if you don't take like ownership for like the life you have in like a, some sort of sense, like, you know, and I get it. Like, I, I know there's like lots of lots of like real victims out there and you don't want to be like the guy who like shits on them. But like, I think even like, uh, like a lot of people who have addictions, especially like a lot of people have had like real heavy trauma, trauma and like their background that forced them into that addiction because that addiction is kind of like masking their pain. But like, even for them, like where you don't want to blame them, but it's like, you need to take some sort of ownership if you're going to come out of that. And like, um, no, I, I like how you said that because like, I think that's, especially even with like younger generations, I know like technically I guess we're both millennials. I'll be at the top <laughs> end. You'll be at the bottom end, but like, uh, you know, we're both like, uh, millennials and like, I know our generation, so many of us are developing this like victim mindset okay. and, um, a lot of people aren't even like that big of victims when you think about it, but it's still like just one of those things. Like you're never, your life isn't going anywhere if you're not going to take ownership for it and, uh, and take ownership that you can change it. Like you really need to do that. That's like the first step in any kind of transformation. Yeah. And I think again, ownership in any direction. So like when I was younger and I was partying, like I owned the fact that I, that's what I did. Like I wasn't, I wasn't blaming it on anybody. I still don't blame it on anybody. And again, I like, there's so many circumstances and stuff, but even if you fall into like, like addiction, like what, one thing I wish my mom always would have done is everything she did. She always blamed it on somebody for why she was addicted to alcohol. And it's like, I would have loved it 10 times more if she would have been like, you know what? I own it. I, the, I am the reason this happened. Um, and even if she didn't change, even if she said after that, but I'm not going to change. I would still rather have her own the fact that it was her decision. Um, yes, there's some circumstances that she went through that probably led to it, but at least, again, owning it gives you the chance to change it. You don't have to if you don't want to, but it gives you that chance. Um, and so that's a big thing that I think, again, it doesn't have to be positive or negative. It could be either direction, um, but just owning it either way. It's like you, you got a chance to change it. And again, if you don't, you don't have to, but um, you give yourself that opportunity and um, that's better than just, again, being like that victim minded where it's like, well, I blame it on everything else. So I have no control over it. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I think like, especially with our generation, um, I think we do that more like, like, let's not talk about addiction, but more in like, in our like lives, our occupations and our jobs <laughs> or dreams like that. Like, I know, yeah. like, we live in a different world. And like, you know, we're all constantly talking about like raising minimum wage and like, we don't have enough jobs, like, you know, and all of that kind of stuff. Like I, I hear coming out of millennials all the time. We can't get paid <laughs> enough or there's just no opportunity. Like our parents have it. And I know our housing markets, like, especially up in Canada is just complete trash, but yeah. like, there's one of those things where it's just like, you can keep complaining like this and trust me, I've seen like a lot, so many millennials that do that. They just complain and they don't do anything about their life, yeah. but it's just one of the things you 
have to kind of understand is like you can take ownership and understand that we do live in a time which is probably more opportunity available than ever in the history of the world. Like you just have to understand that that's just the truth of the nature and to have a victim mindset and just be like, Oh, it was so much easier for our parents <laughs> or something like that. Like, it's just not true. And it's just like, um, you got to take ownership of where your life is. And, uh, yeah. And like, like you said, if you don't want to change it, like, then that's completely cool. And, yeah. but like, uh, taking ownership is the first step to changing it. And like, there's tons of opportunity. And that's one thing that kind of kills me about millennials th these days that, um, that like hurts me a little bit because these are like right. all of my peers and shit, but it's just like, mm -hmm. there's just so many people who are so pessimistic about the world yeah. and like, I get it when, if you're watching media, like where, where else are you going to come <laughs> or, you know, like it's going to make you pessimistic, but it's just like the truth is there's a ton to be optimistic for. And like when, especially when it comes to opportunity and like, like actually living a fulfilling life, I think it's a lot easier to find help to do those things in this day and age. Totally. And I think like one thing that I always come back to is like, there's a lot of power in just like betting on yourself. Like just being like, again, I'm going to take ownership, but like just betting on yourself that you can make X, Y, Z happen. Um, and that comes with taking ownership, but once you take ownership, it's like, okay, now what do I do? And it's like, well, just bet on yourself, bet that you can, if you're my age, like if you're a millennial and you're like, I want to work in social media or I want to work in whatever, but I don't have that background. It's like, well, bet on yourself that you can figure out how to get there. Like you're going to have to put in some steps, but like, even for me, a super small example is I have, um, I have an engineering slash supply chain background, right? no that's pretty much all I've done for college and career work. And I'm moving into a marketing role and, and it's because I wanted to move towards marketing. Um, and for me, it was like, well, I, I built my resume and I'm like, I have nothing on here that screams marketing. Like you open this up, you're immediately throwing this in the trash. Um, and so what did I do is like, I bet on myself that I can learn enough that I can put on my resume that I can at least get an interview so that I can at least talk to them and show who I am and what I'm about. And it, and it turned out like I, it took me a couple months where it was just grinding out of, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to take all these certifications. I'm going to do all these different things. I'm going to study all these articles. And I bet on myself that it would be worth it in the end. Um, and I think you can apply that to anything again, if that's, the, the wage, the minimum wage, it's like, okay, at least I understand that maybe we want to change that or, or however you look at it, but for your own circumstance, just bet on yourself that you can make over that. Mm -hmm. How can you just like think, okay, I want to be making 20 bucks an hour or 15 bucks an hour. And I'm making seven twenty five right now in the U S what do I have to do to get to that point? And then am I willing to bet on myself to get there? Because if you're not, then you're just stuck in that circumstance. That's again on you for for taking the ownership and deciding that route. Um, but if you take ownership and you're willing to bet on yourself and that it would be worth it, then you have a, again a chance to to change that. And I'm that's something I'm super passionate about. Of just if you want it, bet on yourself that you can get it. And whatever that is, career, family, whatever. Um, but there's a lot of strength in that. Heck yeah, and like. Yep. You're right, man. Bet on yourself. That's a perfect way to like say it. And like, honestly, it, like we said, like it can take time, it can take patience, but like, um, having that right attitude, like just completely changes everything. And if you, if you go into personal development, like into any of that kind of stuff, like, and you start like reading books and like listening to podcasts and doing shit like that, you'll notice like, it's all of it is just like conditioning you to change your attitude, like have a different <laughs> attitude, like every day you kind of wake up and how you look at the world and how you look at situations and like take action. That's like a huge one. Like um, take action was a huge habit for me to learn like years ago. Um, and it, it, you know, it's a freaking every second, like, you know, every time you have a decision, like, are you going to take action? So it, it, like, once you condition yourself to do that almost automatically, then it, you can do it without there being that like big resistance that always like kind of pops up when you're starting. So like all of this shit is just conditioning and like developing like a really good attitude. And that's what personal development is. It's just like a better attitude of like kind of how to like, like be with the world. 
Totally. That's like the best way I've ever heard it put is it's just an attitude change. It's mm -hmm. like you going from being pessimistic to optimistic. It's being um, like crazy headed to level headed. It's just like, it's all of that built into attitude. And I think that's, that's really well said. And I'm probably going to steal that for future. future <laughs> um, and it's something, again, it's ever, it's ever changing, right? Like you said, it's years, it's, it could be from one year, it could be five, 10, 15, whatever. But even for like myself, like I'm not perfect in any sense. Like I still have times where I, my attitude is crap and I'm pessimistic and I'm not taking action. And mm -hmm. I think what comes with um, consistency is just like you realize, okay, I'm in that state of mind. How do I get out of it as quick as possible? Hell yeah. Like how do, how do I limit that bounce back time of I'm in a not so great headspace or attitude space instead of it taking five months to get out of this and start taking action and ownership and all of that again, um, how can I get that down to like a week or a day or an hour or whatever the case is? Um, so again, I'm not perfect. I mean, I'm, I've had times, that's one reason I'm up here right now in, in the cabin is like, I just didn't have a great month. And it's like, how can I just change my attitude, come up, go outside, you know, do stuff that, that fulfills me and, and fills my cup up. But um, that's a, that's a big thing I've worked on is just limiting that, that bounce back time. Mm -hmm. And uh, hell yeah, man. And that's actually yeah. a perfect way to like say it too, is like, we're not we're like, nobody is perfect. We all like, even like the people who are into personal development and shit, we always bounce back into bad attitudes all the time. <laughs> yeah. And like, uh, yeah, I had a shit year myself, man. And like, I, I had some points in the year where it was just like, I fell off a lot of my good habits and like some, like, especially during those lockdowns, like a lot of like, yeah. just like a lot of anger and shit that, and my old anger that used to be in me that soul was held me back, started popping up again. And it's just like, like you said, like the more you get used to it. And this is like a kind of like a meditation thing too. The more aware you are of like your like kind of like your subconscious like ha habitual like patterns and stuff when the more you become aware yeah. of them it becomes easier to like not let them take over again when they pop up and yeah. you know they'll pop up it's life like freaking we're gonna have shit times and like you know we're gonna like uh and you know COVID every now and then right COVID, yeah something like covid will pop up we'll be like what the hell do we do with this thing exactly uh, and like yeah. how many people got completely fucked with covid so it's just <laughs> yeah. like yeah it's true yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's like the big thing is like, man, we just went through an insane year of just crap. I mean, I mean, I was thankful I kept my job, right? Like I, I honestly say like, I probably had the best COVID year you could have had. I was healthy. I didn't lose anybody close to me. I kept my job. Everyone that was in my family kept their jobs. Like we were golden. Um, and I'm super appreciative of that. But like you, we all just went through some crap and like, the one thing with having a good attitude is also give yourself some grace with that. I think that comes with a good attitude. Like, again, if you're going through crap and you're just not doing well, it's like, it's okay to be like, all right, like I'm, I'm not doing well. I'm going to take some time to, again, give myself some grace and fill my cup back up and, and re-energize and everything. And I think sometimes, or at least what I did a lot is if I gave myself grace and like saying I didn't do what I said I was going to do, um, I looked at that as a bad attitude. I looked at that as like, oh, you're weak or you're, you're not a man because you're not fulfilling your word. It's like, no, we all went through an insane year. And it's like, if you fall off habits, you fall off like talking to people or, or connecting with family. It's like, again, give yourself grace and then just jump back on the boat when you feel good. Um, because that's a big thing I used to do is I used to just fall off the boat and then I would be pissed that I did. And then I would jump back on, but I would be without like a sail or an oar or a motor. So I would just be sitting there doing absolutely nothing. And then I'd fall back off the boat mm -hmm. and we'd be in the same freaking spot. Um, so I think again, with a good attitude comes grace. Like don't look at that as a bad thing. Look at it as a positive thing. Yeah. And like, uh, I, I always have that uh, on my podcast, that theme coming up a lot. And like, I guess you call it grace. Like, I think a lot of people would call it like either self-forgiveness or maybe, yeah. um, maybe just taking it easy on yourself, just yeah. like whatever that, whatever you want to call it. But it is true because like, um, 
yeah, late. There was, I think I, I was the heaviest I've ever been um, around like January this year um, during the second lockdowns. I'd like, I was like, I just had so many issues and like around that time and like my dad was sick and like a bunch of shit just happened to me. And like, uh, yeah, like I know like there's, you can easily get into that self-loathing at that, those kind of yeah. points. Um, yeah. Yeah, and like I, I, that is something I was happy. Like I, at least I had the awareness to be like, hey, you guys got to kind of take it easy on yourself right now. This is hard. Like a lot of shitty stuff's happening right now. So just yeah, take it easy on yourself. And like you remember how to be healthy. You remember your healthy habits. You remember all of that other shit. Like start to slowly bring this back. When I have, and I, I lost all that weight, and I'm like I'm like feeling great again. So it's just like. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was one of those things like you got to be easy on yourself because when you get into that self-loathing, fuck, does that suck? And that's, <laughs> oh, it's a miserable spot yeah. to be. Really, uh, I put myself there a lot the past probably two, three years. And it's just like, yeah, it's just not fun. And, and how I think of it is like, I'd rather come back 120% and be at my full, heck, we'll just say 100%, be at my full capacity of what I'm doing and how I'm feeling. And the only way I'm going to do that sometimes is if I drop it down to 20% for a week or two. But instead of if I flip that and didn't give myself grace, I would be just sitting at 50% for the next freaking five months. And I'd be pissed that I'm at 50%. But the reason I'm at, I'm at 50 is because I'm not willing to drop down to 20 for a week and then back up to 100. Mm. And it's just like, yeah, man, I, that's something I still struggle with is just struggling, giving myself grace, time off um clearing the head is a big thing like I'm a huge thinker and I could think of all the great things that could happen but I can also think of all the terrible things that could happen um and what comes with that is just taking time off and and going and have fun go have a beer go hike go to a sporting event when it's Mm -hmm. safe and you might be needing to wear a mask if you're not fully vaccinated but (laughs) uh, but go do something right like go have fun that's that's something that I'm I'm still learning and trying to the reason I'm saying it now is because I'm telling myself to go have fun today as well. Um, but yeah, that's a huge part. Just fill your cup up. I think. Mm-hmm. No, I love that. All right, man, Thomas, this was so much fun. Uh, I got one more question. It's a question of the podcast. So Thomas Champa, God, yay or nay. Good. Yay. Yeah. Good. Yay. All right. <laughs> How do you hold that? Hold that. You're saying good. Yay or nay. Oh, God, yay. God? Yay or nay. Okay. I thought I thought you were saying, wow, man, Canada and United States, our uh, vernacular is completely different. Ha, I was, ha, 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 I'm a Midwest ha, guy, and I don't think I have an accent, but I'm sure I do. I say I say Wisconsin really weird, apparently. Ha, 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 and I say milk really, really weird. I say milk. Um, yeah, God, yay. Yeah. Nice. So were you raised like in a, any kind of religious or, or any kind of spirituality in your life? Yeah. And it's, uh, it's interesting. I'm still, um, I'm working through that. That's something that I've, I've been um, just really diving into lately, to be honest. So I was raised Lutheran. Um, and so we were very traditional Lutheran, go to church, you know, and every Sunday and I was um, baptized and I went through just pretty much everything that obviously like traditional Lutherans go through. Um, and then my, my mom had all her stuff and I went through a ton of life stuff and I really questioned it for a while. Um, I did the, why the heck did all of this happen to me and not somebody else? Um, and so I'm back on that journey again. Um, I'm studying a ton. I'm diving in. So I'm, yeah, I'm religious. Um, I wouldn't say I'm Lutheran or Catholic or anything. I'm just still trying to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I'm grounded in that. That's something that I'm very grounded in, and one of the values that I try to live out. Um, but it's an it's an interesting journey for me. I wouldn't say it's very um, black or white. It's very gray. So mm-hmm. uh, I'm still in the midst of it, to be honest. Nice man. Uh, yeah. Well, good luck with it. <laughs> I think it's uh, I think it's a lifelong uh, little journey there. So uh, <laughs> have fun with that. Um, honestly, uh, Thomas, I had a great time talking with you. You're an awesome cat. I hope uh, I hope everything works out. And let's keep in touch and hopefully do this again. Um, let my audience know where they can get a hold of you or if anything you want to promote. Uh, yeah, feel free. 
Yeah, no, I appreciate everything, man. And it was a, a sweet conversation. Um, definitely stay connected. But yeah, you can find me on pretty much every social media. I'm big on LinkedIn is my main one. Um, it's Thomas Champa. Um, and then I think on Twitter, I'm Champa underscore Thomas. And on Instagram, I'm maybe the same. I don't know. If you look up Thomas Champa, you're either going to get a hockey player or you're going to get me. Ha, ha, so ha, 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 I'm not the hockey player. I don't play hockey. If you find the other guy, that's probably me. Um, if you go to the hockey player, that's okay too. But um, yeah, Thomas Champa, you'll pretty much find me on any social media. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all it is, man. And, and again, I appreciate it. Uh, this was a super fun conversation and, and really cool to meet you. And I think you're the first Canadian that I've talked to that actually lives in Canada. Nice. So that's <laughs> first, and it was fun, but I appreciate it, man. Ah, thanks, buddy. Let me...